This is my Builder's Guild series, where in this video I build an amazing Nordic inspired lighthouse on my starter island to house a future mending villager, and I build a monolithic sugarcane farm for all my firework rocket needs. Both of these builds are extracts from my primary Minecraft Let's Play series on this YouTube channel. So, if you're interested in seeing all of the extra Let's Play fluff around these builds, be sure to check out episodes 4 and 5 of that series. For now though, let's get into some builds. With all of my resources neatly packed away in my brand spanking new shulker boxes, I could finally start and I start by making the landscape just a little bit more interesting as it is at the moment just a flat blank beach. Thereafter I went ahead and I started using the mud and some spruce logs to build a very wide and sturdy base as the structure is being built on sand and is therefore in need of some serious support. Moving upward I started to build in stone variants purposefully in order to contrast against the very brown base. However, I did include some of that grey in the stone walls in the base, as well as the mud and the spruce logs being the brown colours that I pulled upward into the vertical expansions. And as the tower continued to expand vertically, I stepped it in one space in several places in order to ensure that the base of the structure remained the heaviest centre of mass. Additionally, the 45 degree spruce stair roofs I repeated in several places in order for that pattern as well as the colour to be a repeating occurrence throughout the build. And that is the lighthouse where I intend to keep our mending librarian villager, at least for a while. I'm very happy with it, it is honestly a fantastic build, I love it and I just I really did just make it up on the fly as I built it. Um, it looks very Nordic compared to the rest, which is less so. I mean, something has kind of the, the Nordic longhouse roof overhangs over there, but whereas the windmill, which really could have done with a very sturdy base like this, looks tall and lanky. This thing looks broad and firmly set in the ground, which is a good thing being built on primarily sand. Um, its colors are also very limited and mute compared to, say, the windmill again, which has blacks, greys, browns of various colors, even the green of the copper, which this thing has brown and grey. And that, that's it, that, that is the only two colors it has, in varying degrees, but it's simpler. I don't mind it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, do you like our lighthouse build that we have? We've got some campfires in the top as well, some smoke rising. Let me know your thoughts, what would you have done differently? And while you're there, my friends, why not give this video a like, a thumbs up, that thingamajig, and maybe, you know, a subscription if you're new, if you're finding me for the first time now. I really would appreciate it. Now for the aesthetic elements of this build, which will come in a little bit, we're going to do the Technics first. I want to bring in an air of mysticism, right? This is a fantasy world and I want to start introducing some of those fantasy magical elements. So I've built the storage element so far, right? And if, I've, if I ever need more than three double chests full of sugarcane, then, then something is wrong. Unless they some way somehow introduce a sugarcane wood type like they did with bamboo, but I'm, I'm not holding out hopes for that. Uh, what? Where's my... Oh, there it is. Hi. Um, yeah, so I wanted to build this thing first, which right there, I've got this little drop chute where hopefully, if everything goes well, the sugarcane should fall from what is going to be a floating structure above this collection point into that hopper and be stored, which does mean I can take some random blocks. And I'm just going to go for the acacia wood because I have it in my inventory right now. And I want to go up... I'm thinking about 10 blocks before I do anything else. From that point, as I built upward, I gradually widened the base of this floating structure in order to act as a funnel for all of the sugarcane that this farm is going to be producing. 
which if I were to demonstrate real quick by placing a bucket of water down a water source, it would flow out seven blocks from that. So I've got seven granite blocks out here and this will be drop shoots on either side of the farm acting in the full height of the farm. What in effect I will have is I'll actually have a water source placed there which the drops of the farm will fall down to here and be funneled to the center where this is the final drop shoot into the storage system of the farm. With the rough width of the technical aspects of the farm laid out thanks to this drop shoot, I could finally begin to move into building the sugarcane farms itself, at least the first layer. And it's a very simple observer and piston push based sugarcane farm. And by adding in the last bits of glass over there, I think the farm is ready for me to simulate. If I were to do that, that side grows and I've got sugarcane that goes down. Now the farm is not going to be lossless, but I think for the most part, it should be efficient enough. And I'm going to add enough layers vertically that I don't think it's going to matter too much. Uh, this block can't be here because that's where my drop chute needs to be. All that remained then was to expand this farm vertically, adding three more total layers to the set. And man, the resulting farm is ugly, mostly because of all the granite. I'm not a fan of the granite. Luckily, it's a fairly simple process to hide all of that hideous granite between a far more aesthetically appealing stone variant box. And after building said plain and boring box, I could go in and I could add in the details, the inverted slope of the horns versus the bottom uh, funnel downward, and these dark deep slate accent elements that I really like seeing. And for those that don't know, this is very reminiscent of a creeper farm that I built in my last series. And I really like it. It's a very cool and stark fantastical monument that sits out in the middle of the landscape. And finally, we finish this monument off by detailing or at least filling in the spaces for the lower funnel. And man, working from the bottom up is by far the most tedious part of this project. And with a handful of really small twirls and add-ons to the deep slate detailing, I think our sugarcane farm is done. And in the roughly one hour or so it took me to build the shell and detail all of that around the outside, we've gotten very close to 10 stacks of sugarcane from it. So that is brilliant. That's fantastic. And I've not been losing any. It all works very well with the funnel and actually lands on the hopper, not falling around the outside. 